uh, last week, last Monday, uh, 10th was my first day. So I'm very new. I'm mostly here to know you guys and I would love to talk more. Uh, I'll change the mode a little bit. I'll talk about song health because I don't know anything about other than this. <laughs> so uh, uh, please bear with me. And if you have any question, I would love to answer. Um, so soil health is a, I call it a fancy term because this term was there for long. And uh, in the history, we always cared about soil health, but in, in different names. So how it is defined is completely dependent on who is defining it. A person sitting in here might define it differently than a person sitting in some uh, Middle Eastern countries or in Africa or in India where I'm from originally. Uh, so it, it differs, but the principles, they are the same. So it's like the capacity of the soil to function, its functions, what, whatever it does to maintain and sustain life, uh, give us a beautiful environment, <laughs> uh, grow healthy foods. That's the main deal. That's the principles, just to uh, function properly, like our body, like our health. If you're healthy, our body, our organs, our, uh, we, we, we function properly. So I'll talk a little bit about the functions I'm talking about here. So these are a couple of functions, but there are many other functions that our soil does, uh, mostly recycle the plant nutrients, which are mostly different elements of the environment uh, in different forms. Uh, improve soil structure that helps soil to uh, grow beautiful crops, you know, get more benefit out of it, infiltrate water, uh, provide enough air for roots and the biology of soil. Also to maintain biodiversity, which is very important. And I'll be talking about biodiversity a couple of times probably. Um, boost crop production. That's a primary purpose of any, any producer, any farmer. You have to do boost the production, whatever, whatever you're producing. By crop, I'm trying to mention also crop and livestock because that's uh, some, it depends on the producer, right? And uh, sorry, and ultimately to sustain a healthy environment where we grow healthy crops and don't pollute our environment, don't leave soluble salts, which will also call fertilizers. They're nothing but salts. Uh, so just to keep a healthy environment. And all of these are directed towards overall human welfare, monetary, socioeconomically, and culturally. So why do we care about soil health? Because soil is non-renewable. It, it takes a lot of time to build a little bit of soil. So it needs maintenance, right? Like a maintenance for a home or for a car. It needs proper maintenance. You have to put money in, money to it so that you get proper benefits out of it. Sustainability is one of the big term. It, it came more popular, became more popular in 70s and 60s, but it was there long term. We need to sustain a farm. We need to profit, get profits out of it, produce crops, and also produce more over and over to feed the population of the earth. So because of the mechanization, the green revolution and everything, we produce a bunch of crops and we're producing the most amount we can produce <clears throat> and feeding uh, the, 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 the 7 billion people on earth, um, or at least we're trying to. So when you work that hard on something, and here it is soil, you kind of exhaust some of the abilities of soil, the nutrients, the organic matter, the biology of soil. So uh, it can become a little unhealthy and pollute environment in different ways, actively or passively. I'll talk about them. Um, so ultimately it's conservation of natural resources, soil, water, air, and to, to, to produce a sustainable agriculture, a system of sustainable. So here I will talk about soil health principles, the basic principles, 
uh, and that should not differ based on location, but how you, how you approach to these principles, that might differ depending on where you are, your climate, your water availability, your um, other patterns of nature, other uh, available resources might dictate some of it. So first is soil armor. So you protect your surface soil because topsoil generally contains that beautiful soil organic matter we call. That's a carbon source that the life of the soil that stores energy, nutrients, helps the uh, soil organisms <coughs> to get food and energy. So you have to want to protect your soil surface. And it also helps uh, to protect the soil surface from different kinds of erosions, wind, water. So you have to have a cover over soil. It can be a crop or residue, whatever it is. Maintain living roots. So by this, if you, if you keep always some, something living in the soil, some, some crop uh, on, in the soil, the roots will keep the nutrients, which are very soluble otherwise. They can easily leach out of soil just with a little bit of water. Um, and with living roots, we can hold those nutrients in the, in the, in the, in the plant biomass. It, it can act as a slow release nutrients in later times. So you always try to maintain something, some living roots in the soil so that they keep the nutrients in the biomass and not in the water bodies. Diversity is very important and uh, because every crop has different patterns of how they exhaust the soil nutrient, how they exhaust or utilize soil balance. Once you diverse, you are not exist exhausting a certain kind of nutrients from soil or certain kind of elements from soil. You are giving the time to build up. So that's why diversity is so important. You exhaust some, let it build up, then start accessing that element again. That's why you, you make it diverse. Also, different crops also produce some kind of chemicals that help the biology to feed on, to, to, to multiply and help cycle the nutrients to the environment. Uh, livestock integration is a, a, a big deal nowadays, and there are a lot of research that has been funded recently because uh, people are trying to incorporate livestock into their crop fields, even if they don't have, a, or they don't have a business with livestock, they just, trying to contract. I'm, I just recently came from South Dakota and they, they are big into it. They're trying to do that just to collaborate with partners, with some livestock people and some uh, the people who just grow crops and trying to, if they can use some of their, uh, let's say cover crops or uh, fallow crops can be fed to the cattle or to get some extra benefit. And this livestock are an excellent system. They cycle nutrient in their bodies and they help save your nutrients, your money, because you can produce a large amount of, uh, I should not call it this way, but it's a, it's a biomass, which is so energy rich, it's food in a very small space. Only livestock can do that. And that way these also cycle like carbon, the nutrients uh, in a very small space because space is limited nowadays. Because with urbanization, you, 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 have, you, you are lacking space. You need to grow more food with less space. So livestock can be that element, which can produce a lot more food from a small uh, area of the flag. And the fifth one is minimize soil disturbance. We don't want to disturb a natural ecosystem. And it can be in many ways. It can be just doing a little less tillage adding less chemicals into the soil because chemicals are not, are not natural thing. We don't want to disturb what is natural. So natural, keeping the natural ecosystem, not disturbing the natural harmony is one of the biggest deals of soil health. With these five basic principles, we also conserve soil moisture in different ways. If you, if you improve a little bit of soil organic matter, it depends on where you are. If you have 2% solar matter, 
you want to make it 2.1, 2.2, 2.2. So I'm just 0.5% of solid matter. You still try to make it 0 0.6, 0 0.65, 0 0.7. It doesn't matter. Improving is what matters. A little bit uh, into it. And I think these five principles are kind of going towards it. And another thing is minimize chemical use. Chemicals are not free. You have to buy it. Air is kind of free. Precipitations, they're kind of free. They're, no one charges you for that. But the chemicals, they are not free. If you can minimize a little bit of chemical use, that is kind of a profit, right? So with that, I'm going to some of my opinions mostly here. So definitely, if you can utilize the natural resources more efficiently, you will save money. You, you probably are, theoretically, you should save money and we need to do a lot of tests, a lot of research to figure out the tools and techniques that we need to follow for a certain system, for a certain condition, for a certain land, right? Um, climate resilience <clears throat> and biodiversity, different, growing different kinds of crop, keeping, keeping uh, certain uh, kind of crops all the time throughout the year in your land is kind of help you uh, combat the changes in the climate pattern or the weather pattern in your area. Biotic stress, a lot of people will talk about it. Jose will talk about weed suppression maybe. So if you improve soil health, if you use some of the tools like cover crops and uh, other tools, they help suppress uh, weeds, uh, some, some, uh, some uh, pests, insect pests or pathogens because of the natural reaction that happens if you let them grow. Improved soil biology. Biology is important, especially in the form of soil nutrient, because other than the microbes in the soil, no one can cycle the nutrients that is fixed in the different organic form, or sometimes that is fixed in some of the uh, fertilizers or the plant residues, which is also, I call it a slow release fertilizer because residues will degrade and they will release the nutrients, the elements back to the environment or firstly to the soil. So biology is very helpful in that manner. And ultimately, we all look for crop productivity because we need to feed more and more people in the future and the space is less. We have to do it more profitably. So we need more crop productivity. So how, what are the indicators of soil health? Like how would you know Vis visible, which are visible indicators or what, what, whatever you can test? Uh, kind of with different tools and techniques. So one is soil organic matter, which is very well known and probably it comes to the top of the list for any soil health approach. So you want to build up soil organic matter, no matter what, uh, whatever technique you follow. But the idea is just build a little bit every year, every decade, just build a little of soil organic matter. That is one of the primary indicator of soil health. Second is biology, uh, like whatever you do should contribute to improve biology. It doesn't mean that you, you, you um, just help the soil organism multiply because there are uh, like some harmful organisms in, 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 in the soil too. It's all about the beneficial microorganisms. Like Naomi was talking about the predators and there are other, other uh, organisms in soil that can help reduce other diseases, some weeds. Uh, the, all of them are to research and there are a lot of research to be done to exactly find how we can improve soil biology to protect the whole system. Soil structure that helps in movement of water and air. Biology needs the air, the plant roots need the water and, uh, and plant roots also need the air to breathe. Uh, structure, uh, structure dictates how much or how fast water and air will uh, travel through the soil system. So you, when you improve your soil structure, it automatically helps the, all the processes go a little faster. Building up soil organic matter, building up soil biology, it becomes a little faster. It takes a lot of time, but it builds up because that there is no other way around it. Soil fertility, like how much 
it, it, it's not about how much nutrients you have in the soil because you can always put some fertilizer uh, in the soil and you build a, or you, you see the higher uh, amount of nutrients in the soil. It's about how much you are able to efficiently use it and how much you are able to keep it in your soil and not lose it in the atmosphere or in the, the downstream in the water bodies. It's more about keeping nutrients to the zone from where the crops can utilize them. Crops can cycle them to their bodies, to their uh, generation of their biomass. Water movement, I already talked about, is a very important aspect of soil health. You don't want to lose water very fast or, or keep water on the, on the surface of the soil. That will really hamper the life of the soil. It's life inside soil, the root, the, the biology of soil. And definitely erosion, especially in areas like, like uh, Arizona, uh, erosion is a big deal because uh, you um, have a high temperature region with less pre precipitation. And if you cannot put a cover on top of the soil, it's very easy for wind and air, uh, wind and water to disrupt the surface of the soil very easily because there is no protection against it. So that's why I mentioned the soil armor, the cover of the soil, keep something covered, keep something growing in the soil so that the roots help bind the soil particles together so that the wind don't blow them away or water don't drain them away. So I'll talk a little bit about, I'm very new, I didn't do any research here as for now, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I think, uh, what, how you can manage a little bit of soil health here, excuse me. <coughs> so as I mentioned, higher temperature, excuse me, I'll take some water. Thank you. I'm sorry, <laughs> pardon me. Uh, higher temperatures, low annual precipitation, and you have a lot of salts, right? So I'll go one by one, the four different challenges, the most four most uh, important challenges as I feel coming here. So we, we have a, a problem with water. We have very less water available for precipitation water is very expensive. And sometimes we're also concerned about the quality even you pay for the water, right? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> then because of high temperature, so the water evaporates so fast, leaves the salt in the water, in the soil, right? Also, you don't have enough water to drain or leach out the soil, uh, uh, the, the salts from the soil. So you have a salt buildup in the soil. So you get a lot of salt affected soils. Because of this high temperature throughout the year, the organic matter, they decompose very fast. So it's very hard to maintain organic matter level. How would you do that? And the fourth is the survival of soil organic. If you have a very high temperature in the top two, three the inches of your soil there, how would someone survive with no water and very high temperature? I'll go one by one. So this is one of the uh, map. As you can see here, it's, it's, it says the difference between the annual average precipitation and uh, minus average PET, which is potential evapotranspiration. So it's uh, the green, the highest, the darkest green is like 267 inch per year. And the lowest, the darkest red is like negative 63 inches per year. So if you have negative 63, that means you have to fill that water, fill that, fill that gap with, with irrigation to see and, and see where we are. It's one of the darkest zones. And no doubt it is very hard to build up organic matter with decompose very fast because with heat, any reaction goes faster. It's a, it's, it's very hard, it's natural. So we have to figure out a way on it. Um, uh, then 
the scarcity of water. I, I found those photos and I think this one is very recent, like 2020 or 19. Uh, and this is like 2016. So Lake Powell and Lake Mead. And this is an aerial photograph and see how much water we lost. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very new. I, I, I have to go there. I haven't visited these places. I took these photos from the internet. And this is very alarming. Plus, the quality for a lot of people are doing research. I, I, I really personally want to try to talk to them, like when they're talking about quality, how we can manage them better. Because you cannot just use any, any water for your irrigation when you are using a salad crop, or fish, green, beer. You cannot do that. So that also makes the available water lesser than what you see. Now, salt. And I think this is a, a very common picture. The salt left on top of the surface. And this is called uh, caliche or caliche. Uh, there are different pronunciation, and I, I have a different accent, so I pronounce it differently. So it's it's just nothing but calcium intermingled with a lot of minerals. It's very hard, makes a very hard pan, and you cannot do anything with that because calcium salts are mostly insoluble. It's not like your fertilizer that solubilizes very easily. So they they uh, they are left in your soil, making this hard pans. Help, not helping you in filtered water, and uh, when you keep water in the top of it, it's easy to get evaporated, right? So it evaporates faster and from the top layer. So this is another thing to deal with here. And yeah, I mentioned about it: the faster decomposing organic matter when you have that much of heat uh, and you don't have any cover, you will you will lose organic matter. I see. I don't know. It looks like. So this, this is from MAC. I got this photo recently. It's, the organic matter level is around 0.5-ish. Uh, I, I didn't see the report, but I asked the researcher, and he, he mentioned that it's around 0.5, 0.6. So I would say it's, it's somewhere close to that. And we cannot complain because that, that's what we, we are here, because it, it's just the climate that made the soil like this way. But we have to figure out a way, a technique, or a rotation, or, or putting some new crops, or keeping some perennials to make some cover. See, see this area when I because I came from South Dakota, I mentioned again what they do. They they they, they have a, a big snow cover mm -hmm. time between uh, November end to till like March April. So they they cover their soil already. They can they can do it because they have the snow cover. We don't here, so we have to figure out some way cover these areas. We cannot keep this open. And that and then you think about the cover crops and other winter crops, then your problem with the irrigation method because it mostly to flood or furrow, it, it will uh, contradict with that purpose. So here comes the research. So what we can do, what we can best manage our water, also don't leave any empty place like this. So improving soil health, we want to go from, uh, from here to here. Whatever the number is, I don't care about the number of soil. Whatever it is, we can definitely say this has a better, higher soil matter. So our journey will be from here to there. Secondly, the infiltration. Uh, it's not a big problem here, but whenever we are applying irrigation, if we have a system that can retain more water in the rhizosphere, not on top of it like this, like in here, then we'll say that, okay, we might defer or lessen our, our irrigation. We, we can uh, use lesser water or less frequent irrigation management. And that, that, that is up to research again. We need to do the research to figure out the time. And uh, the study we did in Western South Dakota, it's not a, it, they get like 15 inches of rainfall over the year, and it's a rain fed system. So what we found, if you keep crops, they will keep the water or they will uh, attract the water from the bottom and keep it near the rhizosphere zone because they, they produce a suction, a uh, capillary suction, uh, because they keep it, they, they, they take the water in their body. So, 
they also help force water to stay in the zone where it is. It doesn't go out of your profile and it doesn't evaporate. Also, microbial population, though you cannot see microbes because they are micro, they are microscopic, but you can see some mesopora, uh, the technical term mesopora, they're arc norms. And uh, up, the, the idea of these two photos I, is because uh, to see the soil is living, there is no doubt about it. If there were a lot of arguments, there is no doubt about it. So everyone believes soil is living because there are some structure that is not living, like uh, the particles, the clay, like our bone or our nail, mm -hmm. uh, right? But there are certain parts which are living, growing constantly, or go, going through a cycle of like life and death constantly. That's also happening in the soil too. The soil is living, so we have to take care of the hell. That that's my the, the motto here to say. So see this structure uh, completely. Under, I completely understand that this soils, the photos I got mostly from soils where we have very high organic matter or at least higher organic matter than uh, the average soil organic matter level in Arizona. So the idea is different. I didn't see, even if it is from Arizona, you will find some soils that has a like clay structure that disrupts the movement of air and water. And some of them will have some kind of granular or crumb structure that has nice pores that you can see the roots are there and the water and uh, air can follow those nice paths inside the soil to the pores, right? So our idea is to building a structure so that we have these reactions to the biochemical reactions between biology, the, the, the soil organisms, the plants, and the physical uh, earthly elements, earthly elements like air and water, right? Soil nutrient cycling is a big deal. When you have residue, when you have, if you can keep any kind of residue on the soil, that will act as a reservoir and slow release fertilizer. The residue will decompose at one point. You have to maintain, you have to figure out how long it takes to, uh, like that residue to uh, be broken down into nutrients. Definitely gives out. It is definitely free of cost because we already paid for it probably for the last cropping season. So utilize the resource, not only money, but also the, the crop you grew. And definitely the, there is no question. There are a lot of videos and information out there that, that our gut microbiome and the soil microbiome, they look kind of similar because they're microbes, they're, they're, they're ancient and they're, they are there for longer than what we, we are here. So, and we eat the food that comes from the soil and we, we whatever we, we leave out, whatever, when we decompose, when we die, everything goes back to the environment. So if there's a cycle, the microbiome kind of similar. So if you eat good food, you will be healthy. The whole environment will be healthy. So to make good food, we also make the soil system healthy, um, soil health. So how do you grow? healthier foods, right? I will not talk more about or much about these tools and practice, they're common tools and practice. Some of them might work here, some of them might not, but we cannot say it doesn't work or it works until I should do a lot of research. And I'm, I'm, I'm here to do that, right? So I'm calling it conservation tillage, which is less than your conventional tillage. It can be little less, uh, just no tillage at all, or some mulch tillage, whatever it is, lesser than whatever you are doing, you go lesser disturbance of your soil. Manure uh, or compost or any soil amendments of biological origin or uh, right, any amendments can add a little bit of extra organics that you don't get from a chemical, chemical fertilizer, right? So anything that is a little bit more natural than uh, chemical, like industry or battery made, uh, I think that that kind of amendment can help soil, build up soil organic matter. Crop rotation is very important uh, and, and choosing a perfect crop for the for rotation is also important and that, that helps build up the diversity, the biology of soil and the interactions. Cover crops, I know 
Uh, I, I will get a lot of complaints because water is important here. But the, 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 the concept is, uh, if you can spend a little bit more to get larger profit, you still make the profit. And I always, uh, I always learn from my, uh, my, my colleagues that uh, think it as a maintenance cost, like for your car service or your home, home's painting. It's your soil, it's your land. And uh, you have to sometimes put a little bit extra money to maintain it better so that you get a long-term benefit out of it. Uh, crop residue, there is no question. Residues help soil, put an armor on top of the soil, help uh, reduce erosion. And uh, legumes are nice tools because they can give you slow release, organically grown nitrogen fertilizer, right? Because they have rhizobia in their nodules that can fix nitrogen and help save some of your uh, So what I'm trying to say is soil carbon or organic matter is the key and it almost helps with all of your soil functions. Soil cover saves nutrients, makes it more fertile, and keeps the soil, it keeps the nutrients where you want them, not in the water, not in the atmosphere. Soil biology helps the nutrient cycle. And here in this area and semi-arid regime, you have to figure out a way to efficiently utilize your water. Efficiently doesn't mean that using less, it's about using whatever you want to use, but more efficiently. And thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. I'm happy to answer any question. You can reach out to me anytime. I do have a phone number, but uh, my office phone number, but I, I don't have the access right now, so I didn't put it here, but I can share with Ayman or Pai. Yes. 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 Any question? Thank you.